1939, two Bat-themed superheroes made their way to the newsstands. One became an icon of American pop culture. The other became a lost hero of the Golden Age. According to Boy Scout law, a scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Ned Pines was trying to live up to these high standards when he started his first publishing venture in 1919. He was only 14 years old when he started printing a newspaper for his Boy Scout troop. It wasn't long before he realized he could make a profit printing newspapers for other Boy Scout troops. The Scout Courier Publishing Company was born. It was the humble start to a publishing empire. At age 23, Pines began publishing his first pulp magazines while attending Columbia University. After graduating in 1931, Pines decided to focus his full attention to his publishing enterprise. It was a great field to be in. The Great Depression started two years before, but pulp magazine sales were skyrocketing. Pines kicked off the better publishing line with Thrilling Romances and Thrilling Detective. Magazine titles using the word thrilling would become the hallmark of the better publishing line. In 1933, Pines deviated from the thrilling moniker with Black Bat Detective Mysteries. This short-lived title featured a non-costume detective with no name. He's only referred to as the Black Bat. The Black Bat Mysteries only lasted about a year. The character was the creation of William Fitzgerald Jenkins, under the pen name Murray Linkster. A quick side note on William Fitzgerald Jenkins. He was an amazing pulp magazine writer who began his career in 1919 while serving in the U.S. Army. He wrote romance, westerns, and mysteries, but what he's best remembered for is science fiction, and if you're a sci-fi fan, you'll love this. His short story, Sidewise in Time, is the very first parallel universe story. He also coined the term describing Earth's initial contact with alien life with the title of his novelette, First Contact. And finally, he foresaw the modern computer and the internet in a short story called A Logic Named Joe. Pine's publishing empire was not restricted to better publications. Early on, he established multiple publishing lines and there could have been any number of reasons for this. It could have been a way to avoid taxes. He could have been a way to borrow money against one line without jeopardizing his entire operation. Or he could have taken on partners, and these other lines were a way of separating partnerships from each other. Regardless of the reason, this is the way Pines operated. It was in one of these secondary lines where another Bat-themed hero would appear in 1934. A story titled, The Bat Strikes, featuring a hooded vigilante graced the pages of Popular Detective. The Popular line was the trademark of Pines' Beacon Publishing Company, Beacon used the word popular in all of its titles, such as popular romance and popular science fiction. In this story, investigative journalist Dawson Clade is framed for a murder he did not commit. Clade is found guilty and sentenced to the death house. With the help of some sympathetic police officers, his execution is staged. Clade returns to the streets looking for the criminals who set him up. He realizes he can't return as himself and must take on a new identity, one that will strike fear into the hearts of criminals. As he ponders the situation, a bat flies in through an open window. A lantern produces a strange shadow that inspires him to take on a new identity as the Bat. The Bat wore a black hood with a bat logo on it. He carried a gas gun that would leave the bad guys unconscious. He would tie them up and leave them for the police with a bat logo stamped on their forehead. The credited author is C.K.M. Scanlon, but as it turns out, that was a house name used by many writers working under the Pines Publishing umbrella. By looking at the plot formula, sentence structure, and vocabulary used, it is generally believed that the author was none other than Zorro creator Johnston McCulley. After his four-issue run in Popular Detective, a fifth story, Blind as a Bat, was advertised for the March 1935 issue, but it was absent when that issue came off the presses. 
quick side note on Batman and the Bat. The Bat came out almost five years before Batman. Batman creators Bob Kane and Bill Finger claim that they were unaware of this character prior to the creation of Batman. But both were known for being avid pulp magazine readers. They did claim that Zorro and the 1928 silent film The Bat was the inspiration for Batman. The writer of the pulp magazine Bat, whether it be Johnston McCulley or someone copying his style, may have been drawing off the same inspirations that influenced Bob Kane and Bill Finger. In late 1938, the sales figures for action comics featuring Superman was becoming known around the publishing industry. A number of publishers quickly went into action to fulfill the public's hunger for costumed heroes. Pines followed this trend by starting up a comic book line and putting costumed heroes in his pulp magazines. The actual process for the creation of a third Bat-themed hero is lost to time, but my educated guess is that Pines hired a writer to create a superhero called the Black Bat because he already owned the name. The writer chosen was Norman Danberg. Danberg was an established pulp writer who wrote under a number of pen names, including the CKM Scanlon name, which was used by the author of The Bat in 1934 and 35. The origin of the Black Bat was written by Danberg under the pen name G. Wayman Jones. The secret origin of the Black Bat begins in a courtroom. District Attorney Anthony Quinn is on a one-man crusade against the underworld. That is, until the underworld strikes back. An underworld lackey throws acid into Quinn's face. The attack leaves him blind. After his recovery, he goes into seclusion. He begins the long journey of dealing with his blindness. One night, a stranger visits him. Her name is Carol. Her father, a famous scientist, was helped by Quinn when he was the DA. Now, they want to help him by way of a top secret medical procedure. He agrees to go through with the operation. The secret procedure restores Quinn's sight, but it also gives him powers including night vision, radar sense, and augmented strength. Quinn decides to continue his fight against crime. He puts on a black cowl and a wing-shaped cape and goes into action against the underworld. No criminal is safe from the vengeance of the Black Bat. Black Book Detective Magazine wowed readers with the Black Bat's battle against crime. However, a bigger battle was heating up at the newsstands. Batman made his first appearance in Detective Comics issue number 27. Publisher DC National had another hit superhero on their hands. And according to accounts at the time, the Black Bat made his debut only weeks after Batman hit the stands. The two publishers ran to their lawyers. Both sides threatened each other with lawsuits. Detective Comics and Black Book Detective continued to fly off the magazine racks. There was a lot of money at stake, and both sides began to worry. At this time, Jack Schiff was the editor of Black Book Detective. A few years later, he'd be the editor of Batman at DC. He had an intimate insight into the mindset of the two publishers. According to an interview he later gave, Pines was worried because Batman had beaten them to the newsstands. DC was worried because Pines had the 1933 Black Bat title and the 1934 Bat character from Popular Detective. Pines also began claiming that Batman was stealing elements from another better publication's pulp hero, the Phantom Detective. While lawyers prepared for battle, DC editor Whitney Ellsworth came to the rescue of both publishers. He was working at DC, but prior to that, he'd been editor for Pines. Both parties held him in very high regard. He got both sides together to talk it over. Both DC and Pines were making lots of money, and there was no point in jeopardizing it. They came to an agreement. DC agreed not to go into the pulp magazine business, 
and Pines agreed not to launch a Black Bat comic book. It was a simple agreement that both sides could live with. Pines had been publishing comic books prior to this meeting, and there may have been a Black Bat comic book in the works. Shortly after the agreement, a retooled Black Bat story appeared in comic book form in the pages of Exciting Comics. Most of the bat elements were taken out of the strip, and the character was renamed The Mask. In the first few stories, The Mask wore a baddish black cowl. After a few months, the cowl would evolve into a football helmet. The truce between the two publishers may have been unstable. Where the trouble began is anyone's guess, but signs of trouble can be seen in the pages of their comic books. The Mask mostly fought simple underworld criminals, but in March 1942, readers were introduced to his one and only supervillain, a grinning homicidal maniac called the Harlequin. The Harlequin bore an uncanny resemblance to a certain Batman villain. A couple of months later, Batman readers were introduced to a new villain, Two-Face. Two-Face's origin story of a district attorney burned in an acid attack closely mimicked that of the Black Bat. Could the villain Two-Face be a commentary on Ned Pines? It's possible. During this time period, publishers didn't hang out together at Comic-Cons. They went to war. And DC National was at war with everyone. Batman creator Bob Kane was also known for his confrontations with industry people. Some accused him of swiping their material, and Kane often accused others of swiping his. Another factor that supports this theory is that Batman villains were partially inspired by real people. For example, the Joker's inspiration was actor Conrad Veidt in the 1922 film, The Man Who Laughs. Catwoman was inspired by actress Jean Harlow. Bob Kane and Bill Finger publicly told everyone that the Penguin was inspired by a pack of cigarettes, but old timers at DC used to tell another story. They said the Penguin was modeled on rival comic book publisher Victor Fox after he spit on Batman co-creator Bill Finger's shoes. So there is a strong possibility that Ned Pines was the inspiration for Two-Face. In reality, it's truly hard to gauge the relationship between Pines and DC Comics. Was it a serious critique on his character, or just a fun jab between friends? It's a mystery lost to time, but a photo from the 1945 DC Christmas party reveals Ned Pines joining in the revelry. One last side note on Batman and the Black Bat. For years, Bob Kane and Bill Finger denied that the Black Bat had any influence on the development of Batman. They even denied the similarity between the Black Bat's origin and that of Two-Face. Long after the Black Bat's run was over, Bill Finger let it out of the bag that they did steal something from that character. Finger had noticed the pen and ink drawings on the interior pages of Black Book Detective. He pointed out to artist Bob Kane that the Black Bat's arm gauntlets looked really neat. Kane agreed and began drawing a similar pattern on Batman's gloves. And that's how Batman got his iconic bat gloves. Pulp heroes such as Doc Savage in the Shadow may have had bigger moments in the spotlight, but the Black Bat was one of the longest running pulp heroes. He ran non-stop from 1939 until 1953. Shortly after World War II, the Black Bat was exported to Great Britain where he gained a modest readership that spread across Europe. In the early 1950s, he was translated to German. This was a time of post-war reconstruction in Germany and much of the German infrastructure had been destroyed. Reading was one of the few ways to escape these harsh times. The German adventures of Schwartz Fluttermouse continued on for 30 more years and over 800 stories. Ned Pine's comic book and pulp magazine line ceased publications by 1956. His paperback line and remaining publishing ventures continued on until the early 1960s. Pines eventually retired from publishing but stayed busy. He was named chairman of the board for the Eastern Life Insurance Company. This aging Boy Scout continued following his Boy Scout code of ethics. As a philanthropist, he helped many religious and child welfare organizations. He also maintained close ties with his alma mater, Columbia University, until his passing in 1990. For comic book fans, Ned Pines will not be remembered just as a publisher of pulps and colorful Golden Age heroes. This Boy Scout may be unjustly remembered for being the inspiration to one of comicdom's most well-known supervillains. 
For those who don't know the story, it is easy to dismiss the Black Bat as a mere swipe of Batman. But their relationship goes well beyond that. Their history is intertwined. Like all of Ned Pine's superheroes, the Black Bat fell into obscurity and eventually public domain. New publishers have picked up the character and published their vision of him. However, the Black Bat has never grown out of the shadow of his more famous rival. Hi everybody, this is Darren, the producer of Lost Heroes of the Golden Age. Uh, please hit like on the button down below and share this video with all your comic book friends. And oh yes, please feel free to make comments. I'm sort of curious to see how people will react to the uh, uh, superhero reenactments we did. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know. It was something different. And a special thanks goes out to Paul, Chuck, Janet, Scott, and Bryant. And a mega huge thank you goes out to Vince who played the Black Bat in this video. They volunteered their time, and uh, without them, I could have never made this video. You guys are awesome. <laughs>